Hello so students and welcome to your biology in class. Today we'll be starting another topic, the transport across cell membranes. I'm sure you know what a cell membrane is uh, up to now. So we're just remaining to learn about the transport across the cell membrane. So the first type of transport we'll be looking at is diffusion. What is diffusion? Diffusion is the movement of particles from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. That is, down a concentration gradient. The concentration gradient is simply the difference in concentration between the two regions. It should be noted that diffusion continues until the particles are evenly distributed throughout the region. Here is a diagrammatic representation of diffusion. We can imagine the small circular objects are some particles of juice. After I put juice into the water, the particles of juice even distribute in the cup or container. So diffusion is affected by some factors. These factors uh, cause diffusion either to be fast or slow. The first factor we'll look at is temperature. When temperature is increased, the particles gain kinetic energy and move faster. If temperature is decreased, the opposite happens. Another factor is the size of molecules. When particles are small, they diffuse faster. Think about how easier it would be for a child to pass through a burger uh, and how difficult it would be for an adult who's very big in stature or whose size is big to pass through the same hole. Next, there's also another factor, permeability of the membrane. We have learned that membranes are selectively permeable. Hence, they only allow certain types of molecules to pass through. This means that if the membrane does not allow a certain type of molecule to pass through, it won't be able to diffuse. Other factors are the surface area to volume ratio. The higher the surface area to volume ratio, the faster the rate of your diffusion. This is because uh, this is because an increased surface area to volume ratio means increased exposure to the environment. What this means is that when a particle or molecule has a very surface area to volume ratio, it will be exposed to the environment where it will be diffusing in. Next, we have the factor concentration gradient. When the concentration gradient is high, the rate of diffusion also increases. This is because there will be a very steep gradient between the two regions. And hence, because diffusion is the movement of molecules or particles from a higher concentration to a lower concentration, when there's a steep or very high concentration gradient, the particles will work tirelessly to bring that situation into equilibrium or it will, the particles will be stressed and they want to create a uniform environment. Next, we have got the thickness of the membrane. A membrane is sometimes referred to as a medium also. So when a membrane is thick, particles take longer to travel through it. Hence, a thinner membrane or medium supports a faster rate of diffusion. Think about how difficult it would be to make a carpet wet and how easy it would be to make a piece of paper wet. That's the same that happens when we're dealing with the thickness of membranes. The thinner membranes allow a faster rate of diffusion. Now, 
let's look at how diffusion is important in living organisms. Diffusion is very important in living organisms. And now we'll be looking at how it's important in plants. To remember these importances, we can use the mnemonic TEA or simply T. The T in T is for transport. So diffusion is important for plants as it aids transport. It aids the transport of manufactured foods throughout the plant. That is from the leaves to other parts of the plant. E. Exchange. Diffusion allows exchange of gases in and out of the leaf during photosynthesis. So without diffusion, plants could not exchange gases and hence they wouldn't make their food. A. For absorption. Diffusion allows for the absorption of mineral salts from the soil. So it's also equally important. It allows plants to make their food too. Next, let's look at the importance of diffusion in animals. We'll be still using the mnemonic T. If you can remember, our T is for transport. Hence, Diffusion helps in the transport of hormones from endocrine glands into the blood, then to target organs. This simply means diffusion helps hormones to be transported to, tra to the target organs. So without diffusion, people could not have hormonal effects. E for exchange. So diffusion allows exchange of gases in the lungs and the tissue cells. If you've been asking yourself about the exchange of gases that happens in living organisms, the exchange is simply between carbon dioxide and oxygen. These two gases in living organisms are the gases exchanged. Diffusion also allows for the exchange of gases in amoeba. 3. A for absorption. Diffusion allows the absorption of digested food from the alimentary canal into the blood. The alimentary canal is just simply the digestive system. So in today's lesson, we've learned about the definition of diffusion. You should be able to remember that. The factors affecting the rate of diffusion. The importance of diffusion in plants. The importance of diffusion in animals. Don't forget to remember our mnemonic T. Transport, exchange, and absorption. Thanks for watching today's video and continue subscribing.